Hi guys, welcome back to Red Dog Gaming, where today we are bringing you the first of hopefully many online battles in Total War. Today we are in Napoleon Total War, and we are fighting an online battle. I was the British, and a player by the name of Karl von Clausewitz was the French. It was an absolute dogfight of a battle, a brutal battle, and we are going to show you why it was that here today. Now, Karl von Klauswitz is a very good player. I'm sure some of you who have played Napoleon Battles have ran into him before. He is a very good player. He can micro like no one else I've ever seen before, and he was playing the French. Um, so basically, let's look at the army composition. So I have here, I believe, five units of foot, two units of foot guards, four units of the splendid rifles, Sharps men, one unit of six pounder artillery, one unit of five inch howitzer, five, sorry, six pounder horse artillery, a unit of horse guards, two, I believe three units of light dragoons. Where is my third? Was it just two? Just two units of light dragoons and a unit of uh, horse guards. And he has two units of six pounder artillery, as you can see, putting the pain down on my artillery early on already. Five units of Swiss foot, or four units of Swiss foot, one of Polish Legion, one of the brave. Look at these guys. Brave men of France. Let's go. One unit of the glorious Young Guard. And one unit of the most feared unit in the whole of Napoleon Total War Online. The gruesome old guard. Four units of chasseur. Uh, well, no, so actually two units of chasseur and one of um, the, what do you call them? Sixth Regiment, Re Regiment d'Infantry Légère. Sixth uh, Light Infantry Regiment. So basically, uh, as we can see here, my plan early on was to come and take this left flank and move here to move around and flank him and take this position while trying to hold the middle with as minimal troops as possible. And this plan works. It definitely works for the most part. But the problem with it is it might work a little bit too good. Uh, too good in general. But he brings his chasseur à cheval around on this flank. This was a great move by him. Uh, but I brought my cavalry in to support my infantry. Brought my cannons across. And I was a bit worried my cannons were going to get charged here. So I saw him charging in. I was like, oh god, we're going to get killed. I'm going to move my dragoons out and put the foot into square. And we did that quite effectively. But the thing is with the Chasseur à Cheval. For their value, they are so strong. With this, with this shooting formation, it is ridiculous. As you can see, I was trying to move this, these guys around to shoot into their flanks. But I thought, I've got to go all out cavalry here. If I lose my cavalry, it's okay. We've got our guys in square. Get the, uh, get the rifles out. And that's it. And as you can see, he is doing pretty much nothing with the rest of this army. We are trading blows with our artillery. And it doesn't work on the part of me. Because he's on the back of this hill. And it's very hard for my artillery to hit him. Although we're up here on top of this hill. You can see already he's silenced two of my guns already. Which is crazy. So this artillery unit was a wasted money. It really did not do much during the battle. God, I love the effects of Napoleon. So I brought the rifles and the foot down here. Another unit of foot. And another unit of foot and rifles over here. And I thought, you know, he's only got four units of foot and some of chasseur. So it's pretty much enough to hold this area if he wants to go for it. But over here, let's take a look back at the cavalry battle. You can see he was bringing these old guard and young guard up. And I was very worried about that, of course. So I decided to get my guys out. Um, and try and pound them with some canister shot. But, as you can see, we are kind of stuck in between a rock and a hard place here. And I was bringing my infantry up. They didn't have much cavalry left, so I decided to go and destroy them. Look at that canister shot. Lovely. Let's watch these guys. Ah, oh, they're dying before they can take the shot. As you can see, he put down the pound on my artillery. So that was one of the big issues that I had in this battle. My artillery got silenced pretty much straight away. As you can see, we're already down to one 5-inch howitzer. Or maybe I did have 
for cavalry. No, I'm pretty sure I only had three. Decided to put a bit of a charge on these guys. They, they formed square, so I got out as quick as I could. And I wanted to reform the lines properly so we could come round and fight these guys properly. Brought the rifles back into action. My micro, as you can see, these guys are walking. They should have been running. The, my micro in this game is not as good as it used to be. It's a little bit rusty. But while we were all doing that, he's already microed these guys into position to pound my rifles into submission. That was a big mistake on my part. But I was so focused over here. It was an all or nothing battle really for me over here. If I won this, my plan would succeed. If not, my plan fails. So I had to get it going. But I brought all my troops up here to, to kind of smash this young guard and old guard into submission. And I thought we could probably do that. We do have two units of foot guards ready to get in on the action. So those guys are going to be strong against these guys. Obviously not quite as good as this old guard. Look at the majestic old guard. Ready to fire. Let's watch this. Look at that. Pinpoint accuracy volley. This foot guard is already feeling the pain. But I brought my horse guards back into the battle to try and charge them. So we both... Forcing him into square. So we both have kind of lost all our cavalry already by this point. He then brought around these regiment of the brave to try and kill my rifles. But I wanted to bring them back. Get them safe. And the reason uh, I found out about... How I found out about these rifles dying over here. Was basically because I saw a notification that men were running. And I was like, where are they running? And then I looked. Oh, they're over there. So yeah, my, my micro was not amazing in this game. So what I did was I brought this foot unit over here. And I wanted to bring this foot unit into this building just to focus. Get rid of those chasseurs over there. And bring this guy in, in play. Because this was all or nothing. If I lost this flank, I lost the rest of the battle. And there's not really much going on in the rest of the battle. So. We charged them again. They managed to form square again. But we forced them into that formation once again. We went from there, I believe... Did he? No. 19 of these horse guards left. They're a majestic unit. Look at them. Absolutely superb. But they aren't getting through that square at all. They are not getting through that square. So. We're doing okay. Brought his line infantry, the brave. I just needed to get these guys one volley off and I knew I would win. I'm not too bothered about these rifles anymore. They have done enough work. So we need to get that one volley off. Shooting a lot of our own troops in the back. But all that matters is getting them to rout. Once they rout, they're probably not coming back, in Napoleon. But they do sometimes. But yeah, I managed to get a brilliant charge off here on his old guard. We brought the pain down on this old guard. And tried to rout it. But look, they don't even break after a ch cavalry charge like that. They are brutal. But while we, while we did that, we had time to move our lines up and try and break these guys. He has got them in very spread out formation. Mine's a bit thicker, but as you can see, we are starting to win this battle over here. But as you can see now, the big problem we had was he has brought his chasseurs across. So while we're microing this over here, he has microed fantastically to get all these chasseurs across. And I really only had one option at this point because I was pretty much surrounded on this side. Charge Big Picton into the fight. The big Welshman going ham. Does he have a custom model? Where is he? Is he dead? I'm not sure. I don't think he is dead. But where is his custom model? I thought he had a custom model. He should be wearing his grey gray, gray, gray coat. But as you can see... We've managed to rout this side fantastically. One of our Hussar uh, Light Dragoons came back. So we routed this side. So the plan, initial plan, has worked. But what you're going to see now is it's worked too well. Look at my army. I only have three units over here while he still has all these fresh Swiss foot up here. His two artillery are intact. Mine is intact but only two firing so it's not really brilliant. Now he's uh, focusing down that building. Um, so yes, we took a lot of losses going for that. And basically, I saw this and I was like, God damn. He, he's won this side. He's won this 
battle. I was supposed to hold him off here, and I didn't. And he flooded the gap fantastically. It was a great move by him. Strong, strong move by me. Strong choice to go for this. Going for the flank. But unfortunately, it didn't quite work. So one of his units, the Polish Legion, Legion did come back. But I saw him going directly after my cannons. I brought this foot up to try and combat them slightly. Um, the cannons weren't that valuable to me at this point. But it's principle, boys. Make sure you keep control of your artillery. Make we sure they're protected at all costs and they'll protect you. But no, we brought this foot up. And unfortunately, they are lily-livered. They are very lily-livered. So I decided to try and come and flank on this side. And I thought, you know, it's three units of chasseurs, two units of Swiss foot. We're beaten up. But it's very likely we can win that gunfight with some rifles as well if we get into the gunfight. So we got into the gunfight. All the while, he charges down this farmhouse with his Swiss foot and he floods across the back gap. So that was really, really the problem here. We did well securing this flank. We beat this flank. But he flooded through the middle. We left the middle too undefended. And these guys, you can see 146 of them basically ran at the sound of the enemy's feet. <laughs> the sound of the enemy marching. They didn't even run, hardly taking any damage. And that was quite a big blow. Because if we'd have had these guys in the end, you know, the outcome might have been different. But yeah, this 143 unit was shocking. It... It routed instantly, but we did lose Major General Picton, just like Waterloo. Um, so that was unfortunate. But as I'm getting bombarded here, I needed to get my troops out. Rifles were losing over here. And at this point, I was kind of like, what am I going to do? Like, what am I going to do? The only thing I can do is try and get across the river and secure it again. It's literally the only thing I could do. Get onto the safe side of the river, which is now their side. So the sides have completely, completely shifted at this point. Completely shifted. And I'm going to be trying to take this side. He has his artillery, but he silences them for a bit, which is great for me. Uh, but this move, in fact, of moving his artillery is going to prove extremely crucial. And it goes to show, don't leave your artillery firing the whole time. I know they're valuable firing, but they can become more valuable later on in a better position. And you're going to see that later on. So he secured this farmland. I just needed to get my guys across and away from this blob as quick as I could. Um, I saw this guy was charging me, so I got my foot to charge into him. The great charge. Let's go, boys. It's very loud. Fantastic. Look at that. And we routed that Polish legion. Sent him back. Back to France. Go on, Polish legion. Where are we? We're at Ligny. So, where's that? The Polish legion has been absolutely decimated by that charge, which is fantastic. But they still have these Swiss foot, which are a great unit. A very good unit. And the thing you notice with Napoleon Online is, like, France is just so OP. Like, France is, is so good. Like, <laughs> all their troops are really good, and they have such cheap options. Like, these Swiss foot are cheap, but very, very, very good. And at this point, I'm kind of surrounded, so I didn't really know what to do, but I wanted to get my guys in a line here to face this Swiss foot that are all decent, decent, uh, decently sized still. Because my guys are pretty beaten up. I thought we have a few units, so we should be able to do okay. Got the rifles firing across the river. And I kept the guards in kind of a reserve just to focus on the river in case they wanted to cross. We got the first couple of volleys off, which was excellent. Look at this. Let's fire, boys. I probably should have spread these guys out a little bit more. You can see he's microing them even more. And it just goes to show you, this guy is a, a brilliant player, guys. Do not be afraid to, to over micro, I guess, I would say. That's what I've kind of learned. So I came forward trying to put the pain down on these guys. We needed these guys to route. Because look at that. They have another 130 um, Swiss foot over here. Chasseur. Swiss foot. See, they have so many troops left. My troops are pretty beaten and battered up. Look at this guy. 60. 
but we're doing decent against these guys. Probably could have spread them out even more, and that would have helped. I like having a double line of troops, just in case... Well, there isn't any cavalry left. Cavalry's gone. Yeah, let's watch this line battle for a bit. Fire, boys! Fire! Men screaming in the background. Oh, God. But you can see, he's bringing his general round, and his general was an absolute nuisance. Absolute nuisance. And you can see these guys were running, so I didn't even have time to put them in square. But yeah, that general was a nuisance, haranguing my troops the whole time. So I had to put them in square. But this is where the dogfight begins, guys. We charge down into this Swiss foot. Put the pain down upon them with the charge. Look at that. Can't tell who's who in this melee. Everyone's in red. But the uh, Swiss foot have the yellow facings. But then he decides to shoot into his own troops, I'm sure. The general will be happy with that. But yeah, because of this cavalry over here, this general staff, we had to keep going into square. And it was brutal. But I brought this foot guard to try and deal with some of these guys over here. This Swiss foot. And these foot guards, they do a magnificent job. Well done, men. Fantastic job. They were so strong in this battle. As you can see, at this point, I was pretty much like, we're done. We're finished. Like, we are done. There's no way we can win this battle. You know, we've got to keep trying. We've got to keep trying. We've got to keep going for it. Come on. And I got them in position to fire again. They got theirs in position again. I was hoping this foot might come back from routing. I was going to bring him up to try and shoot the general. This foot guard's got in position. I was literally with this foot guard hovering over the square. Ready to not, um, ready to put them into square. But look at this. Rifles firing away, but he managed to micro these guys around and bring this Swiss foot around as well. So I was really, really struggling at this point. There was not much I could do. We were getting surrounded on all fronts. See, he didn't even bring these guys across. I thought he was going to bum rush me across, but he didn't. Not yet, anyway. But yeah, look at that. Battering down this Swiss foot regiment. And he wants to bring these guys into melee, it seems like. So I wanted to oblige. So they started running, but he sends his artillery into action once again. Put these guys in square. We put these guys in square because the general staff started attacking. And square is actually a decent formation for here. Because well, he wants to go into melee and not shoot yet. That's good against their uh, general. As you can see, now he starts bringing these troops across the river. And it is basically game over at this point with I'm thinking god damn GG bro GG but it's not over yet we run these guys away I believe we charge I believe I wanted them to charge but they didn't charge so then we charge them again and then they actually do charge the brutal charge of the guards the foot guards let's go they have 108 and this unit only has 86 and look at the damage that it does it just wreaks havoc upon this Swiss foot regiment. He gets them in square. Good defensive formation. We managed to wreak havoc upon him. Brutal. Look at that. Brutal charge. We've still got this uh, foot guards here though. And we keep having to cycle them in and out of square. They also have this Swiss foot as well. And he inspires this Swiss foot here. Which I was basically like, you know... I was just charging because it was the end of game charge. I was like, it's the bum rush you do at the end as respect to your opponent. But no. These guys are going to do well. Because of that, that general dying and that artillery shot. This foot guard nearly routes. Very nearly routes. But he gets the route off first. And we go. Bang. Straight forward, boys. Straight into the Swiss foot. Let's go. And I was thinking at this point, you know, we might actually win this. And we couldn't put these guys in square because they were down to 50 at the last moment. No. They stand strong. Look at these foot guards. Magnificent performance. Absolutely magnificent performance. God, that artillery is loud. I hope you guys can hear me because... Uh, I'm going to have to turn the volume down on the next video because... Jesus. It's set really low, but it keeps spiking miles above where it's supposed to. But look at this. The final charge, I was basically like, we've lost, you know. 
get the final charge in, but we'll go after the Swiss foot first. That artillery power is coming down hard upon us, but he is still firing near his troops. Very near his troops. We shatter that Swiss foot, and then we go after the chasseur. Let's go, boys. Let's go. Come on, the foot guards. And I was thinking at this point, you know, we can win. We can win. An absolute dogfight has occurred, but we can win. Look at the rows of shattered bodies strewn across the hills, especially over here. Look at this. Look at these lines of dead troops strewn across the battlefields. So it's really an end-to-end -end battle. But this is the straw that broke the camel's back for those guys. Look at them all running. But then that, third, that last one, the last one, it caused those gallant foot guards to turn tail and run. <laughs> but we'll pause. But look at that. So we actually killed more than he did, but he started with a few more troops. And that is the decent thing with France. You get some decent amount of troops. I maybe shouldn't have brought rifles. I thought I could hold the crossings with a bit of range with the rifles. But I wasn't microing well enough for that. So in future, I think I'll bring light foot. But yeah, what a dogfight, eh? What a dogfight. All the twists and turns of that battle. That was fantastic. Really good fun to be a part of. Carl von Clausewitz, great player. Fantastic player. Really good, really good player. Great to play with and great to play against. So uh, if you ever get a chance to play him, do so. It'd be excellent. But yeah, guys, thank you very much for watching. If we can get a like on this video, that would be amazing. Let me know what you think of this video down in the comments below. And that would be awesome as well. Thank you very much for watching, guys. And we'll see you again on the next video.